probably bought out of the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. He walked off, his mind still full of what Ernie had said about him. Justin's been waiting for something like this to happen ever since he let slip to Potter he was muggle-born. Harry stepped up the stairs and turned along all the corridor, which was particularly dark. He torches had been exerted by the strong icy draught, which was blowing through a loose window pane. He was halfway down the passage when he tripped headlong over something lying on the floor. He turned to squint at what he's fallen over and felt as though his stomach had dissolved. Justin Filch Finchley was lying on the floor, rigging on cold, a look of shock frozen on his face, his eyes staring blankly at the ceiling. And then it wasn't all. Next to him was another figure, the strangest sight Harry had ever seen. It was nearly headless Nick, no longer pearly white and transparent, but black and smoky, flowing, infallible, and horizontal six inches of the floor. He's dead. His head had fallen, and uh, his face wore an expression of shock identical to Justin's. Having got to his feet, he was breathing in shallow, his heart doing a kind of drum roll against his ribs. He looked wildly up and walked the deserted corridor and saw a line of spiders cuddling as fast as they could away from their bodies. The only sounds were the mouthed voices of teachers from the classes on either side. He could run, and no one would ever know he had been there, but he couldn't just leave them lying here. He had to get help. Could anyone believe he hadn't had to do anything with them? As he stood there, panicking, a door right next to him opened with a bang. Peeves the poltergeist came shooting out. Why, it's Potty Wee Potter, cackled Peeves, knocking Harry's glasses askew as he bounced past him. What's Potter up to? Why is Potter looking? Peeves stopped halfway through the midair some salt. Upside down, he spotted Justin and nearly headless Nick. He flipped the right way up, filled his lungs and before Harry could stop him, screamed. Attack, attack, another attack. No mortal goes to save. Run for your lives. Attack! Crash, crash, crash. Door after door flew open along the corridor and people flew it out. For several long, long minutes, there was a scene of such confusion that Justin was in danger, all being squashed, and people kept standing in nearly headless neck. Harry found himself pinned against the wall as the teachers shouted for quiet. Professor McGonagall came running bolted by her own class, one for whom he still had black and white striped hair. She used her wand to set off a long bang, which resorted silence, and ordered everyone back into the classes. No sooner had the scene cleared somewhat in Annie and a half of arrived, panting on the scene. Caught in the act! And he yelled, his face saw stark white, pointing his finger dramatically at Harry. That will do, Macmillan, said Professor McGonagall sharply. Peeves was bobbing overhead, now grinning wickedly, surviving the scene. Peeves was always loved Hagrid. And the teachers bent over Justin and early headless Nick, examining them. Uh, examining them. Peeves broke into song. Oh, Potter, you rotter, oh, what have you done? You're killing off students, you think it's good fun. That's enough, Peeves, barked Professor McGonagall, and Peeves zoomed to a way backwards, with his tongue out of hand. Justin was carried up to the hospital wing by Professor Flitwick and Professor Sinistra of the Astronomy Department, but nobody seemed to know what to do for a nearly headless Nick. In the end, Professor McGonagall conjured a large fan out of the air, which she gave to Ernie with instructions to waltz nearly headless Nick up the stairs. This Ernie did, bending the cone side like the solid black holocaust. This left Harry and Professor McGonagall alone together. This way, Potter, she said. Professor, said Harry at once. I swear I didn't. This is out of my hands, Potter, said Professor McGonagall curtly. They marched in silence around the corner and she stopped before a large and extremely ugly stone gargoyle. Sherbet lemon, she said. This was evidently impossible because the gargoyle sprang up and turned suddenly into life and hoped to sight as the wall behind him split into two. Even full of dread, what was coming, Harry couldn't fail to be amazed. Behind the wall was a spiral staircase which was moving smoothly upwards, like an escalator. As his and Professor McGonagall stepped onto it, Harry heard the wall thug close behind them. They rose upwards in circles, higher and higher, until at last slightly dizzy. Harry could see a gleaming oak door ahead, with a brass knocker and the shame of a griffin. He knew there was he being taken. This must where Dumbledore lived.